father, Dr. Larry Smith. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome. I want to say welcome back to my faithful, loyal family. I hate to say subscribers because you're more than subscribers, you're my family. We are here together. So thank you for coming back. Thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for liking the videos. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for all of that. I appreciate that. It is so much. I have so much gratitude to all of you for that. So thank you. And to those of you who are new, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna ignore this right here because my, my collar is doing whatever we wanna do. It's gonna probably take over some of this, this episode. But anyway, um, <laughs> to those of you who are new, I am Dr. Larry Smith. I am a certified life and spiritual coach and a whole list of other things too. If you want to know more about that, you can go to www.liveforyoucoaching.com. My business, my practice is Live For You Coaching. It is a life coaching practice where we help people get into their present. Um, my program is the Freedom Prescription. There's so much out there. So if you want to know all that and you probably want to get coaching or sign up and get a gift card for coaching for a friend or a family member since it is the holiday season and we're winding that down, um, you can go ahead and get that at www.liveforyoucoaching.com. If you want to follow me, keep up with me, get little posts from me, inspirational messages from me, whatever, knowing when I put videos out. You can also follow me on social media, on Instagram at Dr. Larry Smith. Or you can follow me on uh, Facebook at Dr. Larry Smith. Or you can even go on Twitter and follow me at Dr. Larry Smith PhD. However you want to find me, follow me, whatever. Just make sure if you're coming here to YouTube, you go ahead and subscribe and you hit the notification bell so that you know when I drop stuff. Um, I do my bestest. <laughs> um, seriously. I do my best to try to post twice a week, at least two to three times a week. That is my goal, my ambition, especially in 2021. There's so many things that I'm revving up in 2021 from business ventures, from um, coaching classes, from coaching programs and teaching programs to revving up my social media. We're trying to get this thing to over 100,000 subscribers. So in order to do that, we have to keep going and going and going and going. And that's what we intend to do because we're family and our family is constantly growing every day. So welcome. Today, we're gonna get right into our subject. Today is a continuation of what I was talking about last week, which was the episode of Ayana Fix My Life, um, season 10. As I said before, uh, season 10 is her last season. Um, and uh, we are actually talking, is it the 10 or seven? I think it's seven, I keep saying 10. Uh, 10 for me is number of completion, but seven is also number of completion as well. Um, and that episode was all above the trauma train. <laughs> um, and we were going through that episode talking about it. And it was just lengthy because it was so intense. It was so dense. There was so much stuff around it that we just had to expand this into a two-part. For all you know, I could have just turned off the camera, put on a different shirt and said, hey, this is the second part. But actually, this is a completely new day from the first half that I filmed because I wanted a new, fresher perspective, a new, cleaner, open mind. So I waited a few days to film this for you guys because I wanted to have a, a more of a, a kind of a less similar perspective, as I guess you would say, similar train of thought. And I wanted to give you something a little more refreshing. So yes, this is a new day. It is as new and as blue as my shirt. <laughs> so, so anyway, so let's get into it because last time we were here, we were talking about Miss Lula. Miss Lula was the mother. Now remember, we have a family, five generations of a family here, all the way from Dane back to the silent generation, which is Miss Lula, to the youngest, uh, uh, KJ, which is the youngest son who's 17 years old, and everybody in between. We got another son, we have a daughter, we have a daughter-in-law, we have an uncle, bro uncle brother, <laughs> uh, uncle father, uh, and, and this makes up the generations of this family. And this family has had a lot of dysfunction. They came to resolve a problem that they had centering around an event that we, the last event that we were talking about last time, which was the event of Uncle Brother, um, so let me, I got, you know, my names and everything, um, of Uncle Brother attacking Yolanda, and him and Yolanda getting into an altercation, and she calling the cops and having him arrested and all of this other stuff. Yolanda is the catalyst to a lot of the stuff, um, and one thing I noticed as I watched it, Yolanda talked a lot of, in a lot of ways of where she seemed to have done coaching or therapy or something. She seemed to have already tried to do some of the work within herself. So she had a very coached, very almost ther therapy way of talking sometimes when she would respond to a uh, Ms. Ayala. And that let me know that she had had some kind of 
therapy and try to get some kind of help. Um, but the interesting thing about it is um, those are usually the worst clients to work with sometimes. <laughs> Let's just be clear. My fellow coaches, you know, therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, you know that those who have gone through years of therapy and generally who have taken stuff uh, to help themselves usually feel as though they already have an upper hand on how this works. And so therefore what winds up happening is you have to be creative. And Ayala, Ms. Ayala is very creative, so she was able to go around that. But I'm sure, if like me, she noticed that she came already kind of prepared from having gone through therapy or maybe even coaching before. But anyway, we ended where we were saying that Miss Lula was told by Yolanda to stay away from Yolanda's three kids. Um, and she abides, she did what she had to do, she didn't do it. Uh, but Yolanda told her that she had to find her, her, her voice. And the uncle brother, or the uncle father, as Yolanda called it, was Mr. Her Herbert, who had actually got into a fight with Yolanda. And so, uh, yeah, Miss Lula didn't have a voice. She's in the silent generation. She lived in the time period in which things didn't get spoken. You kind of just allowed things to go. We found out that she was in a, uh, a lesbian relationship, that she was with the love of her life for 45 years, and then she died. And that kind of agitated and added to some of the stuff that was already present in this family long before she had died. And, and the, the lover was Miss Nancy. The partner was Miss Nancy. And Miss Nancy had um, unfortunately passed, and that kind of added to this chaotic family trauma train that we've been on <laughs> for a while. So Ayala goes after she talks to Miss Lula. She goes talk to Uncle Herbert, and Uncle Herbert is the father figure. He is the patriarch of the family. He is the male figure um, in many ways, partly because the young men in the family and the young women in the family don't have fathers to go back that they can rely on for that. So he takes that role, and apparently he takes that role seriously. But he's also Mrs. Lula's brother, and so he also takes that role seriously. So as a brother and father, he kind of navigates his way in between both of them. Um, he wants to be, according to him, he wants to be looked at as a role model. He wants the children to see him as a stand-up man and, and and to see him as a man of character and respect him for that. But what happened in this situation with Yolanda, that kind of started to hurt him and started to hurt what he felt his reputation was with the kids. Yolanda actually labeled him a woman beater, and that actually affected him a whole lot. Because see, here's the thing, and, and, and this is how I know that in this incident with Yolanda, this was kind of a, a one-off. This was not Mr. Herbert's personality. You can tell by his temperament that this wasn't his personality, and, and Miss Ayala picked that up on that as well. So you can tell by his temperament. Hold on, I'm missing you guys. I'm missing something important. Oh, it's in my pocket, my crystal. You know, I always have my crystal with me, so I was just wanted to make sure it's with me. But anyway, so um, Ayala um, picks up on this that it's not his temperament to be a woman beater, an abuser, um, and this was a one-off, and, and this really affected him. And that's how you can know the difference in a person's character that he didn't try to really justify what happened. He actually felt very bad for what happened, and he was more concerned about him being labeled a woman beater than anything. Miss um, Lula actually went and got him, and that's how it happened, because Yolanda went to leave. She was disobedient to her mother, and he stepped in as almost like a father figure in many ways. Um, and then it got physical. It, it, it got physical. And he, he had his version of it. She had her version of it. And he was upset. He even said, he said, I'm just upset that I lost my cool because that's not what I do. That's not who I am. That's a real man <laughs> response that I can keep my cool in any circumstance. And for whatever reason, in that circumstance, I lost my cool and I feel bad about it. Um, so he was there to help his sister. And I think that stepped in more than the father role of the child, the, the children, the Yolanda, and the other children, because he had seen his sister beaten before, right? He had seen uh, he had seen his sister um, abused, and he just wanted to step in to protect his sister, and that's how that came about. Um, then Ayala, Miss Ayala, asked him about Nancy. What was Nancy like? How was Nancy as a person from his perspective? He loved Nancy. As soon as it, it seemed like Nancy was glue. She was the one who was holding people together. She was the one who gave everybody what they needed from her. Like each son each, or each grandson got what they needed from her. Yolanda as a daughter got what she needed from Nancy. Uh, Lula got, and apparently Herbert got too from Nancy. Nancy seemed to be the glue that 
that was holding this family solid. And she said, people got on Nancy, we want to tell like it is person. She told Yolanda like it is, she didn't take no mess from her. But at the same time, she spoiled her. So she kind of was, you know, a softy at heart for Yolanda, who wasn't her child as we talked about last time, but she was only around her all her life. And she kind of just didn't want to know who the father was. She was that child's father and figure. And, 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 and she really, really validated that. So she actually spoiled Yolanda a lot. Um, and she feels that there is kind of, um, like there's a lot that is there that um, goes on in this situation that isn't uh, said many times in this family. And Yolanda actually felt that way too, that, that a lot of things were in this family that just don't get said. And I've said, I said that last time, that there's a lot of families in that same predicament, as in there are issues, there are problems, there are traumas, there are histories, there are stories and things that people don't talk about. But what we don't understand or what we don't want to understand is that even if you don't address it, that is a micronism, an organism growing <laughs> on its own. And it's a cancer and things like trauma and things like stories and, and things to uh, tumultuous things that happen in the person's life. If you don't address it, it just grow and fester until you start to see it manifest in other ways outside of that person in their real life. And, and that's usually the worst um, place for it to be because now your toxicity that you didn't address on the inside is becoming a toxicity for everybody around you. So Ayala, after she talks to Herbert, she goes to talk to Yolanda. <laughs> and she had an expectation of Yolanda because when you listen to Miss Lula, when you listen to Mr. Herbert, when you listen to the children, Yolanda seems like a menace. <laughs> she seems like she is the catalyst, the, the litmus, the one that is throwing all the stones and causing this chaos within this family. So Ayala was already ready, and she even said that from the get-go. She said, I have my weapon. I was ready, just kind of joking. Um, because she was like, from what people are saying about you, you want some crazy. <laughs> you want some tough stuff. And so she talks about how things don't get said. She acknowledged that. And she said, things don't get said in this family. She said, but she has always felt like the oddball in her family, not knowing her father, not being able to identify who she was, her mom being in a, a same-sex relationship, and she kind of knowing that people thought that weird. And so she loved Miss Nancy. And she, she felt as though, you know, outside she would come across as the oddball. And she said, in a house with two mothers, that just made it even more. She actually was ashamed of that going to school and was picked on from that. But as soon as Ayala asked about Miss Nancy, she <laughs> she smiled. She said, she said, my mom and Miss Nancy spoiled me. Um, they did everything to overcompensate for their relationship. Now, if you can recall back last week, and if you don't recall back last week, don't worry. I'm going to include this to, at the end of the video, the uh, video from last week, so you can go and watch that. If you want to watch that first, that's in the video library. You can come back and watch this one as a follow-up. This is part two. But anyway, <laughs> um, and so she, she, uh, her parents, her mom felt bad about her sexuality, and she tried to hide it, and she tried to do different things to overcompensate it so that it, it wasn't, you know, a shame for her children and for her grandchildren. But... At the same time, she overcompensated in a way to where she wasn't giving her children, and particularly Yolanda, but I'm sure her other children, nothing of substance. Um, she said her god, she called her Miss Nancy, her godmother, her father figure. She was the protector. She was the one who took care of things, uh, and and she said and she said she could get away with pretty much murder, anything she wanted to get away with, Miss Nancy, and of course her mom by default would allow her to get away with it. So she said she knew that there were no consequences to bad behavior, so she just did what she wanted to do. And she said part of that came from her feeling lonely, not feeling like she had any kind of disciplinary structure at the house, at home. And, and so she didn't understand that, you know, certain behaviors you just didn't do because there were no consequences for her and her bad behavior as a child. And that spilled over into her adulthood. I wonder how that happens. <laughs> I know how that happens. That happens all the time. If there are no consequences for children, if children aren't taught boundaries, they will break all kinds of boundaries as adults and think that it's okay and justify it and make explanations for themselves and to other people as to why they have the bad behavior. And they won't even be considered enough to want to take remorse for the bad behavior. This is when you don't build consequences. And a lot of times when parents feel like they have to overcompensate or usually if it's the last child who is getting the most neglected, 
they tend to allow them to live with no consequences. Then Ayala, Miss Ayala pulled out the picture. She said, why would a child send this to their mom? Why would you send a child a picture calling your mom a B-I-T-C-H? And she was just like, I was hurt because of her taking her brother's side and that whole physical altercation between me and Herbert, and I wanted her to hurt. Now that's deep, right? Your child is saying, I want my mom to hurt because she didn't take, take my side. That is a very, very toxic thing, right? Guilt trip. I'm going to batter you because you didn't choose to be with me. That is something we see all the time in relationships. It's rare sometimes when you see it from the, time, the child to the parent, but it does happen. It happens in my family. It's happened in other families. It is definitely a thing. And she said, I don't want anything to do with a man, i.e. Herbert, who would hit a woman. That's not what I'm about. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in men putting their hands on women. And she was talking about her uncle, right? And so that's when she tells her version of the altercation. And it is a lot worse and a little bit more brutal than the version that Uncle Herbert gave, of course. Because in this situation, she's the victim. She knows she's the victim. And she is seeing more of, and really the truth is, there's his side, there's her side, the truth is somewhere in the middle. But her story is a lot, lot, a lot, lot worse than his. And we find out that that's because she had been battered. She had been in abusive relationships. She had been in that experience. And so that experience with her uncle just triggered her back into what she had been through before. Now that goes back to what I had said earlier. If you have a trauma, an issue, a story, a history, something that you do not talk about, there can be something that happens in your present life that can trigger. And it might not be to the level of magnitude of what you've been through, but because you never healed or you never dealt with your past stuff, it's just now magnified to something bigger and makes the matters worse. And so Ayala asked her a deep question. She said, would you be able, would you be humble enough to ask for his forgiveness for what you said about him and for what you've put him through because of the situation? You can tell she stopped for a while, but then that's when the therapy kicked in and she's like, yeah, I'll be willing to do that. I'll be willing to do that, whatever. So it was very interesting with that. And so and then we meet her children. Um, there's Justin, there's Lauren, there's her youngest son, KJ. Um, and she talked about her children. She, she says her children, her, her oldest son, Justin, is a friend of an abuser. He, he befriends men who will hit women. Because it turns out that her daughter, Lauren, was in currently an abusive relationship. And the guy that she was in a relationship with, her son, Justin, was friends with. And he wanted to go on double dates with his sister and her, her boyfriend and all of this stuff. But, you know, so we'll get to how that played out. But at the end of the day, she was like, I don't like him because how dare he be with somebody who would abuse his sister? And we see the pathology begins to unfold. Miss Lula had acknowledged, as I mentioned last week, she was in an abusive relationship. Yolanda acknowledged that she was in an abusive relationship. And now the daughter acknowledges that she had acknowledged that she was in an abusive relationship. And the thing about that is, that is a pathology and it's definitely not uncommon. Because what happens is if you don't make it wrong to be in an abusive relationship or if you don't address it for what it is, your children normalize it. And if your children normalize it, the chances of them getting into a similar relationship are very high. And so that's what we have to wonder about as parents. What are we feeding our children? Not necessarily by what we're saying, but by what we're doing. What are they observing us being involved in in our lives and how is that impacting their future decisions? Um, and the funny thing about it is when the, the conversation is, when the question is asked, have you had the conversation about all of this and your abusive experience with your ex and, and all of this stuff? Had you had that conversation with any of your children, your son, the one that you're saying accepts men beating on women? And the answer to the question was no. So like I said before, and like Yolanda said, but definitely there are secrets and there are things that they feel the other shouldn't know or they feel that they shouldn't talk about and disclose when they have the same experience. And the healing could possibly come if they come together and share their experiences with one another. Uh, Ayala also asked her, she said, if you do not clean this up, what she said, she said, if you do not clean this up with your mama, the head of the line, your children are going to do the same thing to you. 
Because see here, pathologies, that's how they work. It ain't just about abuse. It ain't just about uh, any, uh, uh, positive, because that can be passed down too. But you have a lineage that you have the toxicity with your mama. That poison will come to your kids and they will treat you exactly the same way. Because that's the curse, if you want to call it, of the pathologies that you create with your actions in your life. Um, all right, so then Ayala goes and talks to the son, Justin. And he said, he just wants his relationship to be good. He said, if me and my mom mix up, uh, if me and my mom make up, and if me and my siblings make up, and we're all doing fine, I want it to be consistent and stay that way. It's, he doesn't want to go back and forth on the pendulums. How many of us have family relationships that they're good one minute, next minute they bad. They're good one minute, next minute they bad. They're good one minute, next minute they bad. It's almost predictable that if it's going to be good right now, at some point this is going to flip and be a completely different relationship. We've all had that experience with family members, with friends, with intimate relationships and other things. The goal is to try to keep consistency, you know, or, or at least find peace enough in yourself that you're consistent enough with the changes. Because you can't, you can't change other people's behaviors, thoughts, and actions. But what you can do is change how you respond to people's behaviors, thoughts, and actions. So anyway, so that's what Justin wants. He wants consistency and a good relationship with his mom. He said his mom threatened his girlfriend when his, I think, wife when he when she was pregnant, um, and. And it was right after they had had a miscarriage. And so it was the emotion behind that, which probably hadn't been dealt with, just kind of amplified with this situation between him and his mother. And he felt as though his mom was kind of selfish. And she was selfish. The reason is because she wanted him to do what she wanted him to do. And once again, like I said, you can't make anybody do what you want them to do or even to see life the way that you want them to see life. Uh, he said his, him and his mom had spoken for three Let me tell you, me and my mom, we had a pretty decent relationship. Sometimes it, we would have contention, so, you know, as in all parent-child relationships. But that was an impossibility for me to go that amount of time without speaking to my mother. Everybody's different. <laughs> I have family members who were different. But I believe that everybody has a different approach to how they see the relationship. We have to keep some connection so that we know what's going on. And three years is no connection to not be able to speak to somebody. Um, but he felt as though his mom had broken heart, broke his heart uh, when she had left him and his sister when they were younger to go be with the abuser. So his mom left him and his sister when they were children to stay with their grandmother to go be with a man somewhere else. I think it was in Atlanta to be with the, a guy who was abusing her, who they knew was abusing her. Do you see the pathologies here, right? Do you see all of these interwoven pathologies? Uncle Herbert has saw his wife. Uncle Herbert had saw his sister abused and wanted to protect his sister. And he had these situations beyond that. His sister had been abused. Miss Lula, Yolanda had been abused. Yolanda wanted him getting in a relationship and leaving her kids to go be with the abuser. So the child, the son is watching his mom go be with somebody who he knows is abusing her. And then there's the hypothetical that maybe his sister's husband, boyfriend, is abusing her as well. So there's so many interwoven pathologies and complexities in this family story. Um, the youngest son, who apparently has an outsider look because he's forgotten, he's ignored, that's a sign that Ayala gave him, Miss Ayala gave him, he has a kind of an open perspective of this, right? Um, he, he, he pretty much says his mom and his brother both are similar personality types, and both personality types are pretty controlling. He says mom has this tendency of just cutting people off and she does it to her children as well which is a whole nother thing in itself what mom what parent would just cut their children off just because they're mad at them that's a pretty cold thing to do given the fact that you did give birth to these people and you did allegedly raise these people and so the personalities that you're embedded in them maybe it's something within you that you might want to work on but that's just not that's another thing <laughs> so he said her mom his mom cuts people off this is just the youngest uh kj he says she has nothing to do with her children, uh, the, her grandchildren. Uh, she does spiteful things like call the police on her uh, daughter-in-law and on her daughter. Uh, she sends pictures and all kinds of other things. Um, and then, of course, like I said, the sister, Lauren, is in an abusive relationship. So we have kind of this interesting take on everything. You know, they all come together. And... and, and and Ayala brings them together to have the meeting, to have the discussion that they've needed to have for so long. 
And so she said, Miss Yolanda, speak to your son. Because she just goes in the room and she doesn't address him. She did the same thing when she walked in the house. In the beginning of the episode, she walked in and didn't address anybody but Ayama, which is kind of, you haven't seen these people in three years. You haven't spoken to these people and you don't have any any type of, I need to say hi or connect to them in any kind of way. And so they all have a role, according to Miss Ayala, in the breakdown. They try to distance themselves and blame other people, but they're all responsible for their part in this total breakdown on this trauma train in this family. Yolanda and Uncle Herbert, and like I said before, had two different perspectives of what happened in the situation. Uh, she said, you did it to me because I'm a woman and you are a punk, right? You a weak man because a weak man. And she just started popping off. I mean, she starts laying into him in that toxic way, tearing him apart. Now, here's another one another point. <laughs> what I see a lot of times with abused women or even what I see a lot of times sometimes, I hate to say this, with my black mothers and with my black sisters, sometimes we attack, we attack, we attack, and we just tear down the ego of the men around us. So sometimes black women, we emasculate, you guys emasculate um, us black men, and you do it from another place of hurt, but you don't even realize how popping, the popping, the popping, the popping, and the tearing that it can be. And so she said, you did it because I'm a woman, and you just a punk, and men don't hit women. And Ayala said, you got to go. Go, 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 go. Everybody stop. She broke it up. She said, everybody go home and you can do some work. You got homework. You got, you got homework. <laughs> and, she, and she gives them all homework. She says, people always say that they want healing, but they fight to be right. They fight not to hear the other's perspective. So how you want healing if you're trying to be right and you're not trying to hear the other side to get some type of reconciliation or some type of, of restoration in this situation? She said, uh, uh, so what she did is she was angry uh, and she tried to minimize it and all this stuff. And, and so, and, 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 and as they were talking when they came back the next day, she said she thought about it. She said she was angry. She just popped off. It brought up the anger in her, the situation, what she had gone through. And Ayala, Miss Ayala gave her, I keep, this, I want to say Miss Ayala, but I keep saying Ayala. Miss Ayala, Sister Ayala, Auntie Ayala gave her a good word. She said, you know what? She said, you have to stop treating people from what you've been through. You have to stop treating the people through what you've been through. How many of us have done that? How many of us have had a bad situation, a tough time, something come up in our life that was deep and that hurt us and that, that, that did us wrong or whatever the case may be. And everybody who have encountered us on an intimate level and even sometimes on a non-intimate level out there in the streets interacts with us through our hurt and we experience them and we see them through that and we treat them through that. You gotta stop doing that. Each person is an individual and each person is a unique experience. Give each person the right to show up as they are and don't allow them to remind you of something you've been through and negatively and you treat them negatively. You've got to not do that. That is a horrible thing to do and that shows weakness and it also shows a non-growth as a person. So Yolanda experiences came from her, her abuse. Uh, that, that's obviously from, from her abuse. Um, she had talked to her mother about it. They had talked about it just like her daughter had talked to her about it. Um, no, she, the, no one talks to each other. They all got the same issue. Some of them have the same personalities and they don't even talk to each other about certain things. Um, and, 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 and so a lot of Yolanda's stuff, Ayala, Miss Ayala couldn't fix right there because there's a lot of unresolved stuff that she needed to go and deal with by herself that had nothing to do with her family. And a lot of times when it comes to relationships and situations, some of the toxic nature that we bring in there has nothing to do with the person we're with or the people we're engaging with in the present, but it has a lot to do with something that we are not going to or have not dealt with from our past that we really need to address and clean up first. Um, she was she, so the que, uh, so when we so the question was, uh, Yala made sure she was okay going into a situation with her uncle. Uncle, are you triggered? Do you feel threatened? I would put you in a situation with the man that you feel was harmful to you or could harm you. Do you feel that way? And she said no. She knew that it was her being big vindictive. Um, it was her um, living through her stuff and, and, and all that stuff and all that, that, that trash that was in her background. She was living through that so she can be around him. And, and so she said, 
the reason Ayana told her the reason why I talk to you is because you set it up in fear. You set up people to fear you, right? You need not be wrong or uh, uh, wrong or or, or um, about that, but that's why nobody tell you how you make them feel because you will. It will. Be, it's a dangerous thing. You will cut them off. You will yell down their throat. You will chew them out. You will eat them up. You will do all those things. And so this is when Ayala brings them in, the mother and daughter, daughter, Lauren and Yolanda, they have the conversation. And she, they get to talking about their similar situation, which is the pathology of abuse that it seems all the lives of women in this family have gone through. And um, she asks Lauren, why haven't you told your mother about this? And Lauren says, because it's none of her business. She doesn't care about me anyway. She wants to hurt me anyway, so why would I share that with somebody I don't fully trust? Do you see, like I said, do you see the lineage? Do you see the pathology? Do you see the line? The common line is, I'm hurt, but I don't trust my family who's also hurt to disclose this information to them because I feel like they're gonna hurt me. But it's just hurt people hurting people and hurt people not trusting hurt people, right? And so Yana facilitates the conversation about the abusive relationship that she had with her mother. Um, and, and, and she says, she brings it out a good point. She said, the reason why I got closer to this abusive man, mama, is because you pushed me more closer to him with the way you were acting and the things you were doing and all that other stuff. And, and, and so Ms. Ayala, uh, so Yolanda went and she was trying to respond to that. And Yolanda said, you have the worst affliction of motherhood. And that is your children are afraid of you. You know, you've always heard, especially in our community, the black community, you know, you've heard that sometimes we want our children to fear us. We've heard things like, you know, I brought you in this world, I can take you out. You don't talk back to me. You don't do this. You don't make eye contact, all kinds of stuff. And we want to develop this relationship of our children fearing us, but your children should be comfortable enough and not as afraid of you enough to come to you when they in need. Because when your children are going through harmful situations, they're going through toxic situations like abusive relationships, if they can't come to you, then you are not giving them a service. And that is one of the terrible things a parent can do is have a child that is un that is afraid and does not want to come to them when they're in need. She said, you've been emotionally abusive. You've been emotionally abusive to your children. And she asked her, and as she was going through the motions of this, you know, I said, look, all that's irrelevant. What are you willing to do differently? See, this is what life coaching is about. It's not about necessarily pulling back the past and trying to drudge it up and trying to hash it out and trying to solve that issue. It's now, okay, now that you know the issue, what are you trying to do now to move beyond this? And I like the fact that later on in the episode, Ayala went and apologized to Mr. Herbert um, because she had no idea that Yolanda was going to go and just attack and attack and attack and she felt bad for putting him in that situation and kind of putting him in the line of fire. Um, and so she did. She did make an, uh, make an effort to go and mend that up, which I thought was good because the way Yolanda attacked him was kind of just trying to bruise his ego, just trying to damage him, just trying to bring him down and whatnot. And then lastly... Ayala talks to the, the youngest son, um, and she just pretty much makes him her co-coach, right? He helps her because he's the one, he's the outsider, technically, in the situation of all this chaos. He sees it all, he has an opinion, and Ayala gives him the right to express that opinion, and she makes him write down what he sees, and then she's going to allow him to disclose that to them. Because like I said, a lot of times in these situations, the youngest is left out, and many times people on the, from the older generation ignore them as though they don't know what's going on. And they be the most perceptive because they're not directly involved and engaging in any of this stuff. And so Justin and his mom sits down. And because his mom talks to him a certain kind of way, and she apparently talks to men a certain kind of way through her own personal abusive experiences, um, Justin said he wanted to be understood. And, and, and Yala asked her, do you trust that your mom is going to be able to do that? Do you trust your mom with your heart? And he says, no. So she said, I'll translate. So whatever you got to say to her, whatever she has to say to you, I'll intermediary. I'll be the intermediary and I will translate what you're having to say to one another. And so Yolanda said that she had lost respect for her son because he stands by a, as a man, because he supports men who beat on women. 
and uh, and it was just you know terrible. Your sister, husband, you know, your boyfriend, you know he's abusive, and you're friends with him, and you want to go hang out, and you want to double date, and all these things. I lost respect for you as a man. Now she's saying this to her son, and Ayala stops her and says, "Find how do you find the place in your heart and in your brain?" to say to your son that he supports a man beating women and of all women beating his sister. Think about that. She didn't even think about that. You are telling your son who you raised, who values you created, who values you gave from you, that you don't respect him as a man because you are you are proclaiming that he accepts women beating his uh, sister, accept men beating his sister. And, or just accept men being women in general. And she said, we need we need an exorcism because this is just too much. This is, this is way, way too much. She said, the last time I told a woman, um, he, 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 said, he said, the last time he let a woman get close to him, it was his mom, and she broke his heart. And he hadn't let a woman break his heart ever since then. She chose a man over him, and she, he, hasn't, he hasn't let a woman break his heart. Now, of course, mom has a different story. She has a different remember, memory of the story. Um, but she exposed him to the abuse, and then she left him. So she assumed that he would do the same thing to her sister, and then he said no. He said he, yeah, her, he said her unhealed stuff needed to be handled because she was just put, Ayala said she was just putting it on everybody, even her children. You know, even her children. She said that to her son. You know, she said that to her son, and then we find out that he's only dating and getting close to his sister's boyfriend because he never, hasn't seen any sign of abuse, but he wants to make sure, and if he has to intervene, as a brother would intervene, he would, but he hadn't seen that, and the only way he can see that is if he's there, and if he starts acting like the way his mom wants him to act, he's going to push his sister away, as his mom has been doing, and he won't be around to be able to see what was going on. Oh, that was a whole open moment for Miss Yolanda because she was only limited to her perspective of what was going on instead of trying to understand the other people's perspective. So when you go back to that idea that we were talking about earlier, that people be so inclined to want to be right, they don't spend time trying to hear the other person's perspective in order to heal. This is what we have here. We have this going on. And so Yana asks her, she says, what measures are you using? Did you, did you, who, who, how are you determining that that boy is a man? How are you determining that he is a man? What measure of manhood are you determined by? Because you've already said Uncle, he, uh, Uncle Herbert is a punk. You, your exes were abusive. So how are you measuring his manhood? And she's saying just because of what I think. She said, how do you tell someone you don't respect them when what you have taught them is what they've known about manhood? You got to explain that. You got to explain that. She said, you know what you are, Miss Yolanda? She said, you are the provocative victim. The provocative victim. You, pro you pro pro provocate stuff. You provoke stuff. And then when you call it out, you make the other person wrong. How many people know some provocative victims? It's almost like they, uh, they, 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 they throw, stuff, throw stuff. And as soon as people say, no, 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 you're wrong. All of a sudden, it'd be like, oh, woe is me. Poor, pitiful me. Uh-uh. You know, it's crazy, right? She said, do you consider, Ayala, what that does to him? What that does to his soul? Your words, your mouth is connected to his heart. Every time you say things like that, you chip off a piece of him. You chip off a piece of him. And she talks about, uh, Miss Ayala talks about the African culture. How at a time, as a young man grows up in the African culture, the men of the tribe, the men of the family, they pull him away from the women because women have an ability to be ab uh, emotionally abusive. And so they pull him away to be able to build his strength for that around other men. And because we don't live in our culture in the United States, African people in the United States, we don't have that same upbringing. But he said, she said, a mother can speak to him in, no, in a way that no other person, no other woman, no other person can. And that is, to me, that was the, to me, that was the boom of the episode, right? That was the, the bomb that was needed to be heard, is that parents, your children hear you and feel you and hear your words and feel your words on levels that no one else can give to them. 
So if a mother is being her son down, then who else can beat him down any deeper than the woman who bore him? Your words hit him hard. You know, sometimes the first emasculation that a man gets in society is from his mother. And then people wonder why he gets into relationships and he's toxic. And he's toxic towards other women. And he has no respect for women because he lost respect for his mom because she emasculated him and beat him down as he was a kid. That is a true statement. And so many people over social media was like, you know, they, they, they were up and down about that. No, as a man, your mother is your first true love. Your mother is the girl of your dreams. And you some if your mother is a good mother, you want every girl you date to be like your mama. That is just or or guy or whoever you dating, you want them to have the personality or at least some of the character traits of your mother. And so at the end of the day, when you don't have that motherly figure and that's been torn down early and it continues to be torn down, then what are you looking for when you because it was so ironic that Miss Yolanda was calling her son a horrible guy, a weak man. She's lost respect to him. It was just like she was just going inch by inch by inch. Her mouth, her mouth was lethal. Her mouth was lethal. And her mouth was lethal because she had to heal her stuff. So like I said a while ago, I know she had went through therapy for her stuff based on some of the ways that she spoke. But at the end of the day, it didn't go through. So sometimes people go through therapy and it don't go through. You got to be receptive. You got to be open. You got to be ready to make the changes that you're learning to work and cope with and deal with. Because other than that, therapy is just going to sit down and talk to somebody for an hour just to have a conversation to waste time and money. Because <laughs> it ain't free. So this family was interesting to me. And like I said, that's why I separated it into two parts because it was just so much. I didn't want to dense it into one whole long video. So I said, I wanted to separate it because you see just the layers. You see just the pathologies. You see just the abusive mind. You know, what happens to abused women, sometimes they're abusive and they're, they're abused, or men, they're abused and they live through that abuse and everybody who meets them have to face the fact that they got abused. And you're not gonna abuse me no more. You're not, I'm not gonna go through that no more. I ain't gonna do this. And they're very difficult to deal with. Trust me, I know personally. <laughs> because I've had relationships with friends and families, who members who were like that. I too myself had gone through that trauma territory in which I had to say, no, I'm not going to ruin every relationship I get into. I'm not going to ruin every friendship that comes in with me. I'm going to clean this up. So my advice is to clean stuff up when it's that, that way. And if it's pathologies and stuff, find out where it came from and clean it up so you don't continue it into the next generation it won't stop unless somebody decides to say hey not anymore it's over it's over so this was a very deep dense episode a lot behind it the next episode i've already seen it 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 was deep and dense so we'll have to deal with that when we deal with that and i hope we can come up with that a lot sooner than later but nevertheless <laughs> nevertheless enjoy the holiday christmas enjoy your time enjoy your space enjoy your peace uh, love your family. Love those that are around you. Love yourself. Keep coming here. Follow me on social media at Dr. Larry Smith. Instagram, Facebook, Dr. Larry Smith, PhD on Twitter. Go to www.liveforyoucoaching.com to learn more about my programs, my courses, my, uh, my, my coaching sessions if you want. We've got Zoom now. We've got telephone. we got all kinds of ways we can connect. There's actually a free 30-minute session out there. Go sign up for it. Let's get some, let's get some, some coaching going. And as I always say, I love you all. I do. And I'll see you in the next video.